Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video we're gonna take a close look on the TS100 mini soldering iron. I watched a lot of good reviews about this soldering iron and I thought to myself I should give it a try. Inside we don't get much, we're getting the soldering iron and it's actually smaller than it looks in the pictures. We got this soldering tip which is replaceable, I actually bought another one. This is the TS1 with a smaller tip for more precise soldering tasks like the ones I need with my micro quadcopters. And we've got the instruction manual along with this hex key driver which allows you to change the soldering iron tip. The operating voltage is between 12 to 24 volts and if you use higher voltage like 24, it takes about 11 seconds to heat up from 30 degrees to 300 degrees and if you use 12 volts like I'm going to use it's gonna take about 40 seconds to get hot so 24 volts makes it heat significantly faster. On the back of the soldering iron we have this 5.5 by 2.5 millimeters connector. Make sure to buy the right adapter because it won't fit a fetcher standard adapter so you have to buy a special one or you can use just the one you have at home. Normally a laptop adapter will work with this one. In addition, we have this micro USB port that allows you to flash it with the open source firmware and to configure it. And I'm also going to connect it in this video to my computer and show you all the settings. We've got here in the middle, the LED screen, configuration buttons. This is the tip placement and that's about it. Let's quickly connect the soldering iron tip. In order to do that, you will have to use the provided hex key. Then just insert the soldering iron tip all the way down. That's it. Now the soldering iron is ready to go. It's very, very light. It weighs only 31 grams and it provides a much compact solution than this XT60, for example, soldering iron, which I have. And this one actually connects directly to an XT60 battery. But I think I'm actually gonna use this one as my regular soldering iron because I really like the precision of this device. And I'm not so happy with my big soldering iron because even though I've used smaller tips than this one, I actually think this one is going to outperform my regular soldering iron station. In this video, I'm going to use this home built adapter. Its output is 12 volts. You can use, of course, a LiPo battery with an adapter and you can use this soldering iron on the go. So let's connect it. Once it's connected to a power source, it immediately turns on, but it's not going to work until you press a button to prevent from accidentally start walking in your pocket or in your bag. So in order to prevent this from happening. So only when you press this button, it will start working. So let's press it. And then it immediately starts to get hot. In order to access the configuration of the temperature, you just have to long press this button and then you can change it between 400 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. So let's put it all the way up to 400. So it takes about 50, 55 seconds to get from a cold state to 400 degrees Celsius. And be very careful, you don't want to touch its tip. Let's see that it's working can see that it's working pretty well. So you don't have any option to change any other configuration besides the 400, besides the temperature of the tip. So in order to configure it, we will have to connect it to the computer and I will guide you through all the available settings. So after you connect it via a micro USB cable to your computer, you will see this drive with no name. And you have here the config TXT file. Once you open it up, you can change the settings. This standby means the standby mode temperature, which means that it's going to be set to 200 degrees Celsius and you can change it between 100 to 400. T work, the default setting is 200, is the operating temperature of the soldering iron. You can see right now it's set to 200, although it says 
the default one is 300 degrees Celsius. So we can change it like that. Wait time is 180, can change between 60 to 9,999. Wait time is the time from operation mode to sleep mode, which means if, we're not, if you're not going to move the soldering iron, is going to be on sleep mode. So there is a built-in accelerometer. So the wait time is from time for operation mode to sleep mode and the default sleep mode temperature is 200 and it can be set on the device. The idle time is between from sleep mode to standby mode which means it's go all the way to standby mode. T-step the default value is 10 can be set between 5 to 25. T-step is the step of the temperature. Turn off volt set to 10, which means if you're using a LiPo battery, when the, the voltage is going to get to 10, it's going to be turned off. So it's a good value and it's very important that can save your LiPo battery because you don't want to over discharge it. Temp show flag is set to zero, can be set between zero to one. Zero it's Celsius and one go, stands for Fahrenheit. And the last value, you don't need to set it up. It's a read only value and it's a temperature calibration parameter. It's been adjusted automatically by the soldering iron. I will put a link in the description to this instruction manual. It's very clear and it helps you to get the basics of this soldering iron. Not that it's very complicated, but I recommend you to go through it and see how it works. In addition, you can use this open source firmware that helps you to configure it with more advanced settings and you can flash it easily with this GitHub repo and I'm going to put a link in the description to this repo as well. I'm By the way, in case that you're wondering, you can't use the USB connector in order to power the soldering iron. You can only configure it when connected to the micro USB. After I disconnected it from the power supply, it takes about two to three minutes for the temperature to get colder so you can hold the tip. I recommend to put it aside for about five, six minutes just to be on the safe side before putting it back in your bag. Overall, I think for $50, it's not a cheap soldering iron solution. It costs almost the same as my bigger Hakio 936 knockoff, but the build quality feels pretty good and the delicate soldering iron tips will allow me to do some more gentle soldering iron works and hopefully it's going to perform pretty well. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about this soldering iron, please feel free to ask it in the comment section below and see you on my next videos. Goodbye.